What's going on guys? Happy New Year to everyone across the globe. We have received official drip marketing of none other than Yaimiko for patch 2.5 and we know she is going to be a electro character rumored to be a catalyst character which is going to be a breath of fresh air from pole arm impact because for those of you who haven't seen it we are going to be getting three pole arms in patch 2.4 the new one for shen her the primordial jade wing spear and the return of the vortex vanquisher but first of all astute amusement guji of the grand narukami shrine she is finally here we have all been waiting for yaimiko one of the most popular one of the most anticipated characters in the entire game impact community and she's only been released or drip marketed for the last 30 minutes or so and she's almost already at 100,000 likes on twitter and over 50,000 retweets already which is pretty darn incredible i think the only other time such an explosive character debuted in terms of drip marketing was actually arataki ito so that's going to be interesting so for those of you saving your primo gems good luck because there's going to be an onslaught of shenha zongli then followed up by xiao and ganyu and then followed up by by Yae Miko, so good, good luck. Now, the fact that she is the only character that has been drip marketed right now would suggest that there's no new four star character because we know Yae Miko is going to be a five star, right, guys? There's absolutely no way she's going to be a four star character, but it would mean there's no new four star character, there's only going to be one five star character. And if in New Year's or 2022, patch 2.5, we're going to be going with this three banner or four banner system, it means we're going to have more reruns, which is a good and a bad thing for a lot of people. Obviously, for everyone that has all the characters already or has all the characters they want already, it's going to be a bad thing. But Yaimiko is there as well, so that's obviously a W. And then for anyone that's missed out on characters or they've been saving their primo gems, it's a huge W. And as I said before, with reruns, because we can now have three or four reruns every single batch or every single patch, that would mean that eventually, you know, instead of having to wait one year to see Ganyu again, you're only going to have to wait three or four months, which I think is very, very reasonable. So I do think the rerun system, the new changes they've made and rerunning loads of characters at the same time is actually a really good thing. It might feel bad in the moment, but in the long run, guys, instead of having to wait one year just to see Shao and Ganyu again, you only have to wait maybe three or four months, which I think is a lot, lot better. So after Yaimiko, before Yaimiko, we have got the Lantern Right event, basically, Lantern Right rerun. We're going to get 10 free intertwined fates, so again, use that wisely. But the main thing is, of course, we get the Nink one, free skin, absolutely beautiful. You have all those characters there. Yunjin is available for free as well. If you don't want Yunjin and you want someone else and you want, like, the hypothetically the best or meta character that isn't already available in terms of Shangling, it would be Sing Cho. And then on top of that, we have actually got a login event from February 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th so all the way up till valentine's day from the february 9th guys make sure to log in every day so you can get these freebies that is three intertwined fate so three wishes and two fragile resin which is actually pretty darn decent for a login event if only we had this over a 30 day period within a month that would be the ideal but unfortunately it is what it is we're just starting off so hopefully mihoyo does see an increase in logins during this period and then they'll be like oh you know what maybe we should do a login event every single day and if you haven't seen the banners already guys and zhongli's birthday is today actually almost forgot about that we do have a zhongli triple crown video incoming but we have got the birthday boy or the birthday god or the birthday grandpa Zhongli, the reason why I started playing Genshin Impact was because of Zhongli and how beautiful he was. I was like, why hello there? And I downloaded Genshin. Turned out Zhongli wasn't there, but then I saw Kai, I saw Diluc, and I was like, oh, you know what? It's okay, I'm going to stay around for Zhongli and shout. Eventually, they're going to come, and I fell in love with the game. So happy birthday to Zhongli, and again, his birthday is December 31st, New Year's. And then we have the banners. So Shenha is going to be with Chongyun and also Ningguan because, you know, Ningguan's got the skin incoming and Yunjin. And this, I believe, is the first time we have two four-star Geo characters on the same banners. So it's going to be very difficult to start predicting what characters are going to come out because normally it's like, oh, we don't have the same four-star elements on the banners. That might change now. In the future, we might even get a four Geo character banner for the Geo supremacists out there who want to you know, beef up their Geo characters, four Cryo characters, anything is possible now. Mihoyo has completely gone and said, F it. And then Ganyu and Xiao have, or rather Ganyu has Singcho, Beidou, and Yanfei on there. And Zhongli will also have Singcho, Beidou, and Yanfei. And then Xiao, likewise, to Shenha has the same three as well. Ningguan, 
Yun Jin and Chong Yun as well. And then we've got Zhong Li's banner, which is one of the most anticipated banners. And Xiao also is one of the most anticipated. You can see by the likes, you've got 61.6k, you've got 65k, and then Ganyu actually is, is not that popular. Also in a poll that I conducted on my YouTube channel, which character are you most anticipated for, excited for, Ganyu actually came last, even though she's super, super OP. And then Shen He came second last, which is kind of crazy, right, guys? Shen He is the new character and seems to be the least popular popular and you know it's not too surprising because it is Zhongli and Xiao who people have been waiting for Zhongli just because he's beautiful and then on top of that because he's arguably the best or the strongest character or the most well-rounded character for beginner players for medium level players or unga bunga players like myself he is like a must-have character so this banner is looking pretty good and then Xiao because everybody loves the small men the short men Everybody wants a bit of Xiao, even though he's not necessarily meta anymore, right? He he wasn't meta for too long. His damage is, isn't exactly the strongest in the game, but he's still a super strong character. Well, not necessarily super strong. He's a strong character, but he's definitely not the strongest character in there anymore. But he's still a fantastic character, and he's very, very fun to play with as well. And of course, you've got Yun Jin as well on the banner. So, and then before I forget, yes, guys. Polearm Impact. We have the Calamity Queller, the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, and the Lithic Spear on this banner. This banner is looking, I won't lie, the five stars on here are looking quite nice. I could get my Primordial Jade Wing Spear to R5. However, I'm going to hold out. And then before we go and look at the Calamity Queller, we have the return, guys, of the Vortex Vanquisher and the Amos Bow, which is obviously for Ganyu and Zhongli. So what it seems like they're doing now, guys, is now they're running the aesthetic weapons or the weapons designed for XYZ character with XYZ banner, which in my opinion is mwah, chef's kisses. That is absolutely fantastic. And of course, Vortex Vanquisher, we have not seen for what, a year or so? It's been an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly long time since we've had vortex vanquisher and let me tell you what this weapon is garbage it is terrible but it's about the aesthetics guys and i need to complete to become the full-on zongli triple crown shrimp that i am i must get the vortex vanquisher it's only going to be r1 obviously i'm not going to r5 it i'm probably not even going to play with it that much but i still have to get it because it's zongli spear and i really hope that i do not get the amos bow because it's only for Ganyu. I do have it on Ganyu. It's really good on Ganyu, but you know what I'm saying? I just don't want to spend that much money to get a weapon that I'm only going to have for aesthetics. So good luck to everyone that is going to be pulling on this banner as well. There are some decent weapons on there. Lithic Blade is actually pretty good on Beido. Sacrificial Bow is a really good weapon. Favonius Sword is also a good weapon as well. Favonius Codex is a little bit copium, and Dragon's Pain is also a little bit copium as well. And then last but not least, the Calamity Queller, which is 16.5% attack bonus, but with a whopping base attack of 741. And the ability at R1 is to gain 12% of all elemental damage bonus, obtain consummation for 20 seconds after using an elemental skill, causing attack to increase by 3.2% per second. This attack increase has a maximum of 6 stacks, so what is that, 19.2% if I've done the maths correctly, 19.2% attack bonus. When the character equipped with this weapon is not on the field, consummation attack increase is doubled, so that's going to be 38.4% attack bonus, and I believe when you are at R5, that will be 38.4 doubled, which is 76.8% attack bonus, which is a lot and the reason why it's like this is because Shen He, I believe you just want to stack attack literally no other stats just attack so she is going to be like a full-on cryo support and as you can see by the weapon you you want to use her abilities and then you just switch off her so she's kind of like albedo in the sense that you drop your abilities you switch and then you get the effect that you're looking for which in this case is going to be the damage bonus or the attack bonus and this is going to look like a cracked amount so she's going to have well over 3,000 attack and I don't know what the ratio is, but that's going to transfer over to your other cryo characters, whether that's Ayaka, whether it's Chong Yun, whether it's Kaya, whether it's Ganyu, whether it's... Oh no, what's her name? 
Rosaria, although Rosaria isn't really cryo damage, she's more physical damage. So that kind of stuff is going to be exciting to see. If she is able to take Kaya up to the next level, I might have to get this weapon because I do want to play with Kaya. I want to make my Kaya level 90 and make sure that he's actually cracked. The time is not yet because I don't know how good Shenhe is going to be. But, you know, as people have said in the past, XYZ characters have been trash. You know, when Kazaha came out, when R R Raiden came out, people were like, oh, they're not actually that good. They're average. And the whole time I was like out there, they're so good. They're so good. And as time passes, oh, guess what? Guess what? People are like, oh, they're the best characters in the game. They're S tier. And for me, Shen Her, guys, a lot of people have already started calling her garbage. She's trash. She's underwhelming. I think she's going to be good. And I think the longer the, the game progresses, she's just going to get better and better and better because more characters are going to be, you know, we're going into this stage of funneling a lot of power into one DPS, which is what Arataki Ito basically is. And somewhat Raiden is kind of like that as well. You're funneling all of your resources into one character to make them cracked. And they will also benefit everybody else by being that cracked character. And I think this is what's going to be happening. Shenhe is going to be one of these characters that is going to boost up your cryo characters and make cryo on its own without reactions strong. So like Arataki Ito with Zhongli, with Goro, with Ningguan, with whatever Geo characters, Geo without any other elements is strong. Shao without any other elements is strong. And now with this... You have Ayaka and Ganyu, who already, to be fair, without any boosting or any other elements, was strong. But now, on their own, you're probably going to see these massive Unga Bunga mono element damage. I do think this is the path we're going to go down. I think Yaemiko could potentially be that for Electro. They're going to make the Electro numbers go even bigger. And then we're going to have mono elements. Just people just like, oh, I can actually play with any element I want. I don't have to play around reactions. And I do think there is a, se you know, a segment of people who definitely want to play like that. But let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. That is the Calamity Queller. We do have a lot of pole arms incoming. We have a lot of very desirable characters incoming. I will be doing scammons. If you do want to participate in scammons, they will always be live at www.twitch.tv forward slash Asian guy stream if you are there on the day of the stream and you have a reasonable amount of summons to do then i will be more than happy to log into your account and do scammons within a reasonable amount of people probably a maximum of 20 people normally we don't get 20 people lined up for scammons and it's a pretty long procedure because i do technically have to get into your account which is kind of like hacking you I'm not actually hacking you, but I need to get past two-factor authentication. We need to communicate safely what your information is so that you don't actually get hacked. So there's all of that, and that takes up a lot of time. But yes, without further ado, thank you very much for watching the video, guys, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And once again, Happy New Year. Bye-bye.